you know, uh, it takes time. You have to go through all the mortgage stuff. You have to get inspections. Housing takes a while to get liquid. Now, yeah, stocks, you know, mutual funds, savings accounts, those can be liquid in a day. I get it. But it just takes a little bit of work, a little bit of time, and you can have 19, 28K compared to, you know, 11, 12. Hey, I'm just here to show you the numbers. I'm not here to, you know, hype up Pokemon and tell you to throw all you your know, money. I found that comment to be very suspect. Pokemon and tell you to throw all your money in ETBs. Um, I have been. It's worked for me for years. Right. Buy one set, held it the whole time. This is where you'd be at. Starting with XY, you'd have a 1,300% gain, flash fire, 2,300% gain, 923 for Furious Fists, 2,000 for Phantom Forces, 500 for Primal Clash, Roaring Skies at 500, 1,100% for Ancient Origins, Breakthroughs at 600, Breakpoints at 636, we got Generations at 1,200%. Wow. In 2019, and the reprint didn't hit until 2020. So 2020 till now, we're talking about like three, maybe a little over three years, you've made you know over 2x on your money. Whereas you still, I mean, you'd be like halfway to getting 100% returns in the S&P at the same time. What an intro, guys. So before we get started, the intro was obviously to get into the point of today's video, which is why did that happen? And we're going to do that using my mathematical knowledge. We're going to see mathematically why that happened why trying to estimate the future using what they did is in mathematical terms nearly impossible or at least pretty damn hard now before we get started that was just an intro hopefully i made you laugh and it was not intent to offend or insult anyone it was just you know i'm not attacking anyone i'm just uh, trying to review what has been said and it do doesn't matter who said it or what I, it doesn't matter what matters is what they were trying to do and why that doesn't work now what didn't happen what well it all comes down to one area of mathematics which is what many people actually don't really even know what that is uh, and i'm not an expert myself but i do know a couple of things about it and that is statistic now there's two separate branches and they work together they look together in harmony and those are probability theory and statistics. Now, probability theory is a, thinking about it as a theoretical uh, aspect of mathematics. That it's in theory, that's on paper. Those things do not exist in the real world we live in. In the real world, statistic plays its role. Statistic, it's, you can think about it as applied probability you have a problem you work on on paper on theory and once you need to apply that problem to the real world that's when statistics comes handy now hopefully it's a bit clear the the differences between probability and statistics now what was the problem well in statistics what you do is is you study estimators what does it mean well as i said in probability theory you do have your you know fancy things you can name random variables you've got functions you got the mean you got the variance what the hell did you just say well you got all these fancy tools that do not exist in real life so what do you what you need is you need to estimate it and uh, the the things the tools you use to estimate these other theoretical tools are called estimators yeah no shit let me give you an example one thing that you have used in your life for sure 100 percent when you were into school you had your gpa you wanted to calculate what your average you know gpa was is a sample mean you used the sample mean now you must bear it i just you know i just took all my grades and divided by the number they were how is that not probability i was you know i was that statistics well what you did is you took something in the real world, your grades, and you divide them by the numbers of grades you had. That is the sample mean. That's one instance of the sample mean. Now, what's good about it, right? Because, okay, I, I calculated my GPA because I took all my grades and blah, blah, blah. It, it, does, does that mean my actual GPA is not exactly 
what I just calculated? Are you telling me that, Barrett? Well, not quite. Well, the sample mean as a very known, at least in, in this industry, but useful property that is called unbiased. So it is an unbiased estimator. Now, as I said, I will leave you the proof for the Mac geeks like myself. But what that means is that on average, the sample mean will correspond to the mean. Now, if I haven't lost you already, what that means is, as I said, the mean is theoretical. The mean is up there in the skies. It doesn't exist. You know, it, it, the mean is something you want to get to, but you, you, you'll never be able to reach it. It's kind of like that uh, showgirl you, you see on TV, but you know, you're regular Joe, you're never gonna be able to even talk to her. That's a mean. But you wanna go try to get as close to the mean as possible. And an unbiased estimator, such as a sample mean, so that time you school you calculated your GPA, will on average correspond to the mean. Now that that's quite astonishing, right? Well, there is one trick though. And at that point you might wonder, okay, better so who cares what 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 does that have to do with Pokemon? Well let me tell you why. So the, it all comes down to the hypothesis made. Now, in order for that to happen, what you need to have is your returns. So your, you know, Pokemon returns of whatever, you know, Darkness of Blaze ETB, as we saw of uh, whatever it was like base set booster box, the returns, what they need to be is what is called IID which I'll leave you, I'm gonna leave you a link, um, which is the same one as you see right here, for to reference of uh, an article I found on, on the internet of a, a professor of a Harvard Business School. And it kind of explains in an intuitive manner, but also goes into a bit of detail what IID means. Well, what it means is, it stands for identically independently distributed. The f did you just call me? Barrett. Can you please stop swearing? Okay. Easy. What does it mean? Well, you know when you flip a coin, right? You flip a coin, you get either heads or tail, right? Then you flip it again, heads or tail, you flip it again. Do you think that if you get tail on the, on the first toss, does that influence what you're going to get on the second one? Well, you may have that perception, right? If you get tails three times in a row, the next one, you feel like it could be, it's going, you know, probability of being hats, is going to be in your favor. Well, that's just a perception. In reality, it doesn't matter what happened before, it's going to happen again, it's probably going to be the same one half and one half. It's either hats or tail, and it does not matter what the outcome of the previous toss. That is the I for independent. What does identical mean? Well, identically distributed means that they have the same distribution. And uh, that is a more advanced concept. But let me let me give you an example. So you know your, your gas in your normal distribution, right? That uh, big kind of a bell. You got that bell like that. So many times in finance, and you'll read on the articles, the returns are estimated to be normal. So they're going to be around the mean and they're not going to move too much around the mean. Now, that, especially for Pokemon, is not the case. So what does it mean? Well, it means that when you apply, let's get back, when you apply sample mean as an estimator, the hypothesis that make him a, an unbiased estimator do not hold. So if they do not, if so, if they do not hold true, it's not going to be unbiased. There's going to be a biased. And a bias means that on average, your estimator is going to be different from your theoretical value, which you're, you're never going to get, right? That's the girl of your dreams. You're never going to get to the mean. You can only try to get as close as possible. So another interesting factor of the sample mean as an estimator is its variance. Oh, God, will you shut the f*** up? Barrett. Why are you throwing swears at us? Why are you saying all these words? Well, variance is the square of a standard deviation. 
or in other terms, standard deviation is the square root of variance. Barrett, I'm lost. You, you remember where all your favorite YouTubers talk about volatility, right? As to volatility in finance? Well, that is standard deviation. Volatility is the same word as for standard deviation. If you're a mathematician like me, you want to be cool, you call it standard deviation. Many times we, we use the variance, but that's the same thing. So it's kind of how your outcome differs from the mean, right? But you want to calculate the variance of the sample mean. Now, again, for max geeks, that's, that's a proof. That, as you can see here, comes down to this number n. n is the number of data points you have, right? So if you have, the more data points you have, the more the variance is going to be small. What does it mean? Well, well, the more the difference is going to be small between your expectation or sample mean and your observation. So you can expect that the more observation you have, the more the sample mean is going to be a rival, right? So you can understand now that with only one data point, what's going to happen? Well, your variance is going to be zero, which is good, right? Variance zero means that it's, it's going to be the same as the mean, as the sample mean, if, if I use that. Well, yes, but you only have one data point. So it, it, it doesn't make sense. Well, not really, because you're, you know, if you take at gain, so as I showed you in the intro video, like the, the, the second one, that guy was looking at gains over five years, 10 years, but just one data point, right? So it wasn't looking at weekly gains, yearly gains, monthly gains. It was looking at, okay, it came out, I released, it was $600, right now it's 69000 and uh, that's, you know, a 69,000 whatever percentage gain, right? Okay, that is one data point. Trying to make a model, one, one data point, again, I'm not picking on anyone, that was just for entertaining purposes, but if you try to do that and you think it's survivable, well, good luck. Why? We, I just showed you why, I just showed you the math. Now, can you estimate then further future returns with one data point? Well, the problem is with running a point, you're not going anywhere. I just showed you it, it, your estimator is going to be biased. It's not going to be unbiased. So there's no point in estimate future returns using past returns with one data points. So at this point you may ask, well, Barry, but what if you have more data points? Well, that got interesting because if you have more data points, the problem comes down to the distribution. If the returns of, let's say, your polyval booster box are not IID, so they're not independently identically distributed, and uh, in practice, they're not, then using the sample means, so even if you take weekly returns, and uh, so you have more data points, let's say you take weekly return for two years, so over 100 data points, the fact that your returns are not IID, so they do not respect the hypothesis in order for the sample means, so the average returns over that period of time to be unbiased, it's going to be, it means that your sample mean is going to be biased. The average returns you're going to calculate is going to be biased, meaning that it's going to differ for, from your theoretical value. And you may ask, Barry, what the hell do I care? Well, if you want to use that as a model to predict the future returns, it's not going to work. That's why you should care. Even if you have a large amount of data points, if they do not respect the hypothesis, they're not your sample mean, your, let's call it the average, it's not going to be unbiased. It's going to have a bias and that is going to take out your gain. Now, I'll leave you for those of you who are curious, especially in the financial world, there are articles, there are papers that study better estimators. Now, you could, in theory, you can apply them to Pokemon. However, for the sake of estimating returns in Pokemon, it's not worth it, right? Because you have a lot of expenses, a lot of transaction costs, so on and so forth. However, they exist. Just let you know, guys, they do exist. You can make the model much better. And that usually apply to finance. So, 
the key takeaway from today is if you want to use one data point to try to prove a point, then we have a problem. If you want to use multiple data points to try to estimate future returns based on you know what happened in the past, gonna happen in the future, and you use a sample mean, we showed that if the returns are not gonna be IID, you're gonna have a problem. Well, Barry, you may ask, okay, so you also mentioned better estimators. What should we do if we want to try to estimate the future? Well, if it were that easy, everyone would be doing it. Everyone would be rich. Now, in my opinion, with Pokemon, your best guess is, yes, look at what happened in the past, but also, but try to focus on the future and on the present. Look at a set, look at what cards are in the set and see if people may like it in the future. If they do, it's highly possible they're gonna be willing to pay more than you pay today for it. Don't get stuck in the past because if you try to look for the future, looking at the past, and you're gonna use these estimators, you're gonna use this type of mathematical tools, you're gonna be effed up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.